So tell us a little bit about what was the experience like to move from being a scientist in a university to being a scientist working for a large global corporate. Well, that, that, that move was very interesting. Uh, the main motivation behind doing that was that, that I knew how to do research, I knew how to write papers, uh, but it was not enough to have people reading what I did. I wanted to have people using what I did. So this was one motivation to move to industry. And the second very important one when that happened is that I had the opportunity to build my own team. And basically building all your own research team is the, is the best challenge for a researcher. What do you think are the objective that an R&D manager should set up for the success of the organization? How do you define success and how do you, do you accomplish it? I think that the main the main measure of success is internal impact. So basically, how you improve uh, the products of the company. That that may imply, for example, increasing the number of users, increasing the revenue. So that depends on the basically the goals of the company, and and that will be also measured with the alignment to the goals of the company. Now the other thing is that it's not enough to find talent. I think that's that's very important. We need to find talent. But also you, you need to find people that can work together. You, you can have like one per crazy person to destroy a research lab. Uh, so basically there, there are three, like I would say there are three types of projects that you can have. One is basically a very large project that the company decides to do. For example, they want to redo a system. Let's say you, you, have, you, you decide to, to improve your search and we do most of the search. The second kind of, problem, of project is a project that basically happened because you scout inside the company looking for things that you can improve. And the last one, I think the third, this one is the most difficult, is something that basically comes from research. Let's say you have invented a new functionality, something that, that is new, that is cool. This is the hardest one because basically sometimes the product manager uh, is not interested. Many times uh, it's interesting but they don't have enough resources or they don't have time because they have to develop, uh, deliver things earlier. But these ones are the most interesting for research because you are putting something really, really new uh, on front of the people. So I think it would help our audience to understand a little bit more what you're doing today and uh, how the process is different, the R&D, if you like, process is different than it used to be in a large company. Yeah, so, so we do semantic search technology um, by using both uh, text queries and also voice queries. And uh, we are targeting the mobile device. So basically, uh, it's a contextual semantic search. So very important thing is where the people uh, is located, what language they speak, uh, what is the culture. Uh, we use a lot of uh, private data that, that become, we come from so typically our clients or telcos and, and the data comes from them. So you can see that we, we, we are hyper-localizing the search experience for the specific purposes of, of our clients, and we build the apps uh, of, of, of that do that. For example, the app will be a browser with a, a search inside, our semantic search, and they will have access to, to local data, to private data of the client, and also some web data from the context that they are working with. So can you tell us in 30 seconds the difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning and deep learning in your opinion? Well, I, I, I always get uh, like a bit uh, mad when I read artificial intelligence and machine learning because that would be like to say the egg and the yolk. So they don't understand that deep learning is a particular class of techniques inside machine learning and that machine learning is a field that comes from artificial intelligence. And of course, artificial intelligence has much more than has has semantic technology, has knowledge bases, has ontologies, and we're trying to really mix everything in artificial intelligence, not only machine learning, but also uh, the semantic part. So basically it's one sub it's a subset of the other. So we have like the egg is artificial intelligence, the joke is machine learning, and deep learning is uh, the nucleus of the joke, the most uh, interesting part. Where do you think things are going to go in the next five years? And what's be requested to go from semantic to meaning? I think that the problem with voice is not really the search part. 
is the complexity of the context. So I think what it will change is the context is much harder to, to understand. So you will always have something that you cannot predict. So what do you do there? For example, today, uh, systems are afraid to say, for example, that they don't know. Like, or for example, are afraid to, to, to say that they are lost. But I would prefer a system that is uh, modest, that says, uh, sorry, I don't know the answer to your question. Or for example, will say, I'm not sure if you're asking about this or about this, can you precise? So basically, the system should ask for help because we are much more complex than, than what the typical machine learning model will predict.